To make games accessible to everyone, you need a settings menu. So let's dive into Giro. So I'm assuming that you already have some sort of menu, whether it's a main menu or a pause menu. So I'm gonna add a new button. And on this button in the inspector tab, I'm gonna say settings. And I'm also gonna change the font size. So I'm gonna search for font. And on the theme overrides font size, I'm gonna change it to 70. Then I want it in between my play and quit button. So I'm just gonna drag it in between here. So now we have a settings button. And now we need a menu to open. So I'm actually going to select the menu and I'm going to add a B box and I'm going to hit the anchor preset and I'm going to put it in the middle. So I'm going to hit the center and if I hold in alt and drag the corner point, change all of them at the same time. So I can do this shape. I think it's pretty good. Then we can select the V box container and we can hit the plus button and we can search for, let's say label and we can put in the text here settings menu maybe. And then we can go to the horizontal alignment and we can center it so it looks good. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger as well. Let's make it 50 and I'm going to change the color as well. So I'm going to go into the font color and I have a color palette here, which I'm going to choose this one. And I have a custom font as well. So I'm going to drag that into the font. I'm actually going to move the settings menu to the side here so we can see both of them at the same time. And underneath the label of the settings menu, I'm going to add a button. So I'm going to search for a button. And I want a checkbox. This will be just on and off. So it's a bool. But if you want multiple options, you can go for a options button. I can add both to show it off. So the check button, I'm going to call this mute. And then I'm also going to add another node. And this will be the option button. I go into the items on it and add element. And then I can say mute and unmute. That's actually all you have to do. You can't see the option button though, and that's because you have to change the selected. So I'm going to change it to zero, and now we can see it. And apparently I didn't use uppercase on this one, so mute. Now it looks a little bit nicer. And then we're going to need a back button after this. So I'm going to add a just regular button, and this will say back. I'm going to select all of them right now. So I'm going to select the button, hold shift, and click on the check button. And then I'm going to go to the filter properties and I'm going to search for font and theme overrides. And then I'm going to change the font size and make it a little bit bigger. I think 25 works pretty well. And I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm actually going to put them back in place. So I'm going to select the VBox container and anchor it to the center. Now it's a little bit hard to see, but it's there. And then the next step is that when we click the settings button, the settings menu should open. And if I double click on it, I can rename it and I'm going to call it settings and button. You should probably have a script if you already have a, let's say, play button to change the scene. And what we want to happen when we press the button, we want the main menu to be hidden and the settings menu to show. And then when we hit the back button, we want it to be the other way around. So for the settings menu to hide and the main menu to show. I'm also going to rename the VBox container for the settings to settings and then VBox container just for it to be organized. So I'm going to select the settings button. Then I can go into the node tab, double click on the press signal and connect it. And you can see that it's connected when it has this similar to a Wi-Fi signal from the node on the side here. And you can also see in the code a green symbol next to the function and that means it's connected to a signal and if it's having trouble with the connection you can right click on the old connection and you can hit disconnect and try to connect it again so let's replace the path with the path to the main menu so i can drag it in from the script into the path and i get the name of it then i can do dot hide and then i can go to the next row and we can drag in the settings menu into the script and we can do dot show and then you probably guessed it, but it's the same, but the reverse for the back button. So I'm going to rename that button to back button, connect it to the same script the same way. And then we can actually just copy what we wrote before, but change it from hide to show and from show to hide. And then since we're working in the menu, we probably want them to always be visible, but at the start of the game, we probably want the settings menu to not be visible. So we can just go into the script and we can make a ready function. I'm going to make a new func and search for ready. And it's a built in function and this runs in the start of the game. So we can actually just copy and paste what we did on the back button. And we want to show the menu and hide the settings. So now if I run the project, we can click on the settings and it should open a menu. 
we can toggle it on and off and we can get the drop down for the mute and unmute. I'm gonna quit it and we're just gonna implement for the buttons to do something. So I'm gonna select the checkbox first. And since the checkbox is a on and off, it's a toggle type. So if I go into the node and signals, I actually want to connect the toggle signal. I can double click on it and hit connect. And in here, we actually want to get the audio server. So audio server, and then we do dot and we can set the underscore boss to underscore mute. And the master boss is index zero. And then it says to enable is a bool. So we do comma and the, the signal keeps track on the bool of the toggle on. So we can just use the toggle on as the true or false for the boss. It's a little bit complicated, but the checkbox keeps track on if it's true or false. And that's if it's turned on or turned off. So that should work. And now if I run the project, you will hear some music. And if I go into settings and hit the mute, on the check button, mutes the music. And if I uncheck it, I can hear it again. And we can actually go to the audio tab in the bottom panel here. And here you can see the master boss and you can make a bunch of buses if you want, but they're indexed in the order that they are laid out. So this is index zero, then we would have one, two, and so on. I'm gonna quickly show the option button. So I'm gonna select the option button. And this was the second one we had. And on this one, it has a bunch of options that we can select from. And for that, we want to select the item selected signal. So I'm gonna double click on that and hit connect. And this is an index. So we can probably just do match and index and then colon. And to know what index we're matching it to, it's the options ID. So we can go back to the inspector and clear the search. And here we can actually see the ID of the different options. So the mute is ID zero and the unmute is ID one. So for the mute, it's zero. So we just type zero here and colon, and then we can go down a row. And in here, we actually wanted to mute it. So we can actually make a comment here. So we know what index zero is. So I'm going to make a hashtag after the zero colon, I'm going to say mute. And then on the next row here, we wanted to mute the audio. So I'm going to copy the audio mute we made before. And instead of muting the pass zero on toggle on, we're going to mute it with true. So it's going to set it to muted. Then we can go down a row and we have to keep it in line with the zero. So we have to remove one indent and then we can do one and colon. And then we can add a comment and this was unmute. and then go down a row and we copy this from before and replace true with false. I'm going to run the project again go into settings and I can click on the options button. So let's see the options. We have mute and unmute. So I'm going to click on the unmute and it's already unmuted. So it doesn't really happen anything. And then if I click on mute, it should mute it. In the description, I'm going to link to some pretty good tutorials. If you want to learn some more settings, this was just a simple mute button. There's so many settings that you can expose to the player. Whether it's audio settings or video settings or key bindings, there's so much you can do with it. And I think settings are really fun and interesting. Hopefully this teaches the basics of how to implement a settings menu. Thanks for watching and special thanks to my members. For source code, custom videos or coaching, check out my Ko-Fi and I'll see you in the next one.